Hello everyone, this is Rose. Today's topic from the Book of Life is Sparing the Rod of Wisdom Will Spoil the Child A wise attitude, belief, or course of action is the navigation to common sense. Webster Dictionary defines spare as to refrain from or to avoid, to exempt from something. Rod is defined as punishment. Spoil is defined as to damage seriously, to impair the quality or the effect of, to lose valuable or useful qualities as a result of decay, to damage the disposition of by pampering. These definitions are significant to this story. Let's take a look at this short story from the Book of Life. Good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Agate. How are you two doing this morning? We are good, Dr. Young. So, Dr. Young says, today we will find out the genders of your babies. As I previously stated, you are having fraternal twins, which means it is the possibility that your babies may be of the same sex or different sexes. This is due to the fertilization of two separate eggs. So Dr. Young turns to his nurse and asks her to set up the ultrasound equipment as he asks Mrs. Agate to get undressed from her waist down. So once it, Mrs. Agate is ready to receive her ultrasound, Dr. Young began to describe in detail his procedure and what he was doing step by step as he performed the ultrasound. He even pointed out the features of her twins on the machine. He also printed her a copy of the ultrasound results. The proud parents, oh boy, they are so happy. This being their first child, just elated to find out that they're having a boy and a girl. Bobby and Pearl, the proud parents, they just wanted to celebrate once they received the good news. So Bobby tells Pearl, look, we already took half a day off work. Why don't we just continue this day together celebrating the good news we just received. So he tells his wife, why don't I just order food from my favorite restaurant so we can sit down together while we have the time and plan our gender reveal party for the twins as well as discuss our parenting's do's and don'ts. We need to discuss the principles by which we will raise our kids. So Pearl agreed with her husband, Bobby. She was elated. Bobby comes from a strict upbringing. As he puts it, he was forced to go to church all day on Sundays and to Bible study every Wednesday night. His summers were spent in the church day camp for kids. He recalls often receiving direct orders on what he was not allowed to do without any explanation other than those are the things of the devil. As a child, Bobby often wondered why was all the things forbidden by his parents, why was all those things labeled as the things of the devil? And why is it that those are the things that appear to be the most fun to the neighborhood kids? Bobby was confused. He wanted an explanation. He wanted more understanding. He was inquisitive as a kid, as all kids are. 
He watched the kids in the neighborhood play at the park, chase, chase each other, toss a ball back and forth, swim on hot days, as well as play sports and go to other kids' birthday parties. So Bobby being taught that he's not supposed to question his elders and to only do as he was told did not take away his curiosity or the questions within his mind. The grown-ups in his church would often say, as God's children, we are not allowed to question him. We are only to follow the principles of the Bible. So therefore, kids were not allowed to question their parents or their elders. They are only to do as they was told. So Bobby, he just had no choice. He had to grow up following these principles. But he lacked in so much understanding. He did not understand. But on the other hand, Pearl, she grows up opposite of Bobby when it came to following principles. Pearl went to church with her family every Sunday, but they only went to one service on Sunday and no other service throughout the week. But her family, they pray together every morning. They were a family of faith believers. She was allowed to play at the park, go to other kids' birthday parties, and swim at the local YMCA on hot days. Her parents were teachers. They believed in communication. And therefore, they would take time to explain things or provide explanations for their decisions. They would give their kids scenarios as an example to why something was good for them or bad for them. They spoke using terminology that was within the scope of their kids' understanding. As Bobby and Pearl ate their dinner, they wrote down the plans for their gender reveal party. That was simple. That was the easy part. They agreed on that right away. Came to a common understanding immediately about the party. But they could not come to a common ground on the principles of how to raise their children. They both agreed to raise their kids believing in God and understanding the power of prayer. However, Bobby did not want restrictions. He feels kids should be allowed to experience life without restrictions. He felt they should be able to have fun. Pearl feels limited restrictions is okay with explanations and scenarios to bring understanding as to why something was prohibited. So because they could not come to a common ground and they went back and forth, back and forth, Pearl gave up and she agreed to allow Bobby to raise their son using his principles as she raised their daughter using the principles that from her upbringing. She believed in letting a man raise uh, his son. She believed in a man teaching a son how to become a man. So she just trust in allowing her son to be in the hands of her husband and was pray, just praying for the best. She respected her husband and she followed their decision that they made. So the twins were born healthy. Bobby Jr. was born weighing 6 pounds 9 ounces and Christina was born weighing 5 pounds 10 ounces. They grew up, the twins grew up being close throughout their childhood. They was just a close 
they was very close as siblings, talking to each other, confiding in each other. They just did separate things because Bobby would hang with his friends, Christina would go out and hang with her friends. They would often just talk to each other about each other and sharing information about what they did with their friends or the activities they were participating in with their friends. But Christina, she began to notice as a as a young as she grew up as a young child, having wise thoughts. She began to notice that her brother was not guided by the same principle as herself. Three months before turning eighteen, she decided she was going to question her mother about the double standard as to why Bobby Jr. was allowed to experience life without restrictions. Pearl, being the mother that she was, growing up in the household with teachers who believe in communication, made some hot chocolate, placed a few shortbread cookies on a serving dish, and sat down with, Chris, with her daughter Christina to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation regarding the decision her and her husband, Bobby Sr., made concerning the principles in raising her and her brother. Now that Christina understands the difference in principles and why it came about, she asked her mother, will I be interfering with you and daddy's decision if I talk to Bobby using the principles that you were raised in under and that you raised me under. I don't want to go against dad, mom, but sometimes Bobby and I talk about things and I want to be able to give him advice based on the principles that I was raised under. Will I be going against dad? By doing so. Pearl was so understanding and she was in agreement with her daughter. She said, baby, your daddy and I made a decision, but that is not to be carried down to you. Whatever is placed on your heart, whatever you feel in your spirit to say to your brother based on the things you see and know that we don't see and know, she say, allow God to use you. Do as you will. Say whatever it is you need to say. You as his peer. You as his level. You at his equal. You can get through in a way that your dad and I can't. She says, so you have my blessings. So one day, Bobby Jr. was hanging out with his friends drinking and partying as they raced their cars up and down the streets near the beach one Saturday night. Bobby with his two friends were arrested for drinking in public under the age of 21 and also for racing their cars. Now keep in mind, he's an 18 year old kid without any restrictions. So this is what he chose to do to have fun. So although Bobby was not the one behind the wheel of his car, because he is the owner of the car and was in the car as his friend raced another car, the police had both cars impound. And this is the reason why Bobby was arrested along with his friend. Bobby did what most brothers would do when they get in some trouble. He called his sister to pick him up from the police station. He was released with a citation to appear in court. Christina decided she 
we'll take up the conversation that her and her mother had about speaking to Bobby as she is willed to do so, whatever come to her spirit. So she decided to use the drive home to talk to her brother about his unwise decisions. She started by telling him about the conversation she had with her mother regarding the double standards in their upbringing. She tells him, Bobby, this conversation is not to find fault in our father's decisions to allow you to experience life without restrictions. However, I believe you should have been guided with wisdom. I believe sharing wisdom with your child is not restricting their life experience, but it is equipping them with tools to help them make better decisions in life. Bobby, you know we were raised believing in the power of prayer and in God. We were raised with the understanding that the Bible is the only true instruction book for life. Therefore, in order to gain wisdom, we must read our Bible and allow the wisdom of the Bible to help us navigate through life. We must listen to the wisdom of our parents and our elders, especially when our elders or parents is reframing us from wisdom, we need to especially go to the principle in the wisdom of the Bible. She wanted to stress to her brother how important wisdom was and to have sound and sane decisions given to him that is truthful about life. Not to just say, go out, no restrictions, and have fun in life. She tells her brother, we both know that in the Bible, the book of Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom in the Bible. And it is based solely on the love of God. So the wisdom that we read in Proverbs is based solely on the love of God. So she's trying to get through to her brother. If our father is not going to give you the principles of wisdom that you need, then go to the Bible for them. Because it's needed in how you navigate through life. Is needed on how you make wise decisions. She further tells her brother, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Solomon talks about sparing the rod will spoil the child. We know to spare means to refrain from or to avoid. The rod is speaking of discipline, brother, or punishment. And spoil is speaking of to strip of natural covering. Daddy is stripping you of natural covering with, through sp how he spoils you. You are losing valuable or useful qualities as a result of decay because you are spoiled. Daddy must not spare the rod. He has to partake wisdom in you. So she tells him, when dad is sparing you from wisdom and discipline, he is not fully sharing the love of God with you. And this is not to put our dad down, but he's doing it because he don't want you to have the upbringing and the childhood he had. He don't want you to be restricted from everything without any understanding. He wants you to fully be able to enjoy life without restrictions and just have fun. But our dad did, do not understand that in order for him to put restrictions, limited restrictions, he will be sharing the love of God with you. He wants to keep you safe. That's what he would be doing by sharing wisdom. And his decision to not do so 
is causing you to decay in value. Brother, I need you to go to dad and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him on the importance of him sharing wisdom with you. It would help you to make better life decisions that will not cause your life to decay because of him pampering you. You lack, brother, in having wise knowledge. Also in the ability to discern inner qualities in relationship. You don't know how to discern the people you hanging around with, their spirits, their intentions. You just followers. You just following them. You are following them and they are leading you down a path to either death or prison. She tells him, brother, you're lacking in good sense. You are lacking in a course of action to navigating using common sense. Brother, I want you to bear good fruit in order for you to one day teach your child. You need to have a balance within your own self, within your own life. A balance of when it's okay to be free and just go with the flow and enjoy life and when it is to slow down and use discernment and use wisdom so that you're not taking down a path to destruction. Brother, you need this information. Go to your father. Go to our dad and let him know so that he can rethink his decision to allow you to grow up without any restrictions and be carefree. Click the thumbs up and subscribe button to receive notifications of more articles from the Book of Life. Be blessed and safe. Peace.